sewage. We all make it. Whether it's from your tap, your tub or your toilet, it all goes down the same drain. Thanks to a hidden world of pipes, pumps and treatment works, we don't even need to think about it beyond pushing a flush or pulling a plug. But what is sewage? What's it made up of? How is it treated? And where does it end up? Whilst sewage can include runoff from our roofs, roads and waste from businesses, the majority of sewage Wessex water treats comes from our homes. When we think of sewage, we only often think of the yucky stuff, such as poo and pee. And while there is a lot of that down there, we are soon to discover there is a lot more to it than just that. We've come here to Western Super Mare's Water Recycling Centre to find out more. This tank is currently holding around 140 litres of fresh treated water. This is how much the average person puts down their loos and plug holes every day. But this water is just the first ingredient. Let's start with the good stuff, poo. Now, don't worry, this isn't real poo. It just looks a lot like it. The average person creates around 250 grams of the real stuff every day. Followed swiftly by some pee. In this case, apple juice. We create around 1.5 litres of this stuff daily. All topped off with a fistful of toilet paper. Toilet paper is designed to break down in the sewage system to avoid blockages. So far, all of this is just from our toilet. But sewage is actually made up of a delightful concoction from our sinks, baths and appliances. Shampoo, soaps, detergent, Washing up liquid, bleaches, toothpaste. Inevitably, other substances that shouldn't enter the sewage system make their way down our drains, such as bits of food, oils, and fats and greases. All of these ingredients leave your home and flow through a network of pipes, mixing it all together. This sewer soup eventually makes its way to a treatment centre near you. Each works has its own way of treating the incoming waste, depending on what's coming in and where the final product ends up. For this video, we will be concentrating on how sewage is treated here at Western Super Mare. Our sewage soup first arrives here at the inlet. I'm joined by Wessex Water scientist Anthony who will take us around the site and show us how it all works. So Anthony, looks like you've brought us to the inlet of the site. I can hear it all roaring in under our feet. Could you explain what's going on down there? Uh, this is all the flow from the catchment at Western Super Mare and the surrounding villages. At any one time, we could be seeing between 280 and 1,000 plus litres a second through the site 24-7, 365 days a year. When it does arrive here, what is that sewage actually made up of? At this stage, it's 99% uh, water and the rest is made up of the larger solids, wet wipes, and just whatever people flush down the sewer, really. So here's an example. As you can see, quite murky, quite dark, and lots of solids in there. 99% of water, that seems like a lot of water. How does that actually get into the sewerage system? It depends on the site, but at a, a site like Weston, your domestic flows from your toilets, sinks, showers, etc., is combining with runoff from your roofs and your driveways into the network, which is diluting that sewage quite a bit. Of the 1% of organic material that makes up sewage, most of the solid element of the sewage is removed at the first part of the treatment process, the screens. Could you explain how the screens work here? Yeah, so we've got three screens here at Weston. They're all escalator screens. So there are lots of bars with six millimeter aperture holes in. And as the flow comes through, the larger solids are being captured by that screen. And as the screen rotates up and round, there's a spray bar at the top, which is knocking the screenings off into a channel before it goes into a compactor and then out into a skip. What does the sewage actually look like just after the screening? So after the screening, it's gone from something that looks like that to something that looks like that. The difference there is, is, is massive, that's amazing. Yes, so as I say, anything more than six millimetres is gone by this point. Shall we go take a look at the compacted solids down at the bottom, see what that looks like? Obviously, we're looking at the compacted mulch. 
how does the compactor work? So anything that's screened off uh, goes into the compactor, which is basically just pushing all the liquid out of it before it comes through the pipe and is dropped into the skip. I can see it looks like a whole mix of stuff, but what is this all actually made up of? Predominantly things like wet wipes and uh, other plastic material people have flushed down the sewer. I'd be interested to know as well, what's the strangest thing you've actually seen in one of these? We've seen t-shirts, pens, pencils, toothbrushes, false teeth, but I think car keys are the weirdest thing I've ever found. Someone's car keys. That unfortunate soul who dropped those down the toilet. Not having a good day. No. <laughs> Where does this all end up then once these skips get full? So after they're full, they're taken off site and because they're mainly plastic based, they can't be composted. So they're probably incinerated or put to landfill. Makes it super important then that our customers only put toilet paper, pee or poo down the toilets, I suppose. Exactly, yeah. The less other things you flush, the lesser this builds up. Let's get away from this very strong smell and take a look at the next stage. Let's go. The wastewater now moves along to the primary settlement tanks. Here, the liquid is completely slowed down, giving time for any remaining solids to slowly sink to the bottom, leaving fats and oils on the surface. The rake arm rotates slowly around the tank, forcing settled solids, or sludge, out of the bottom. This energy-rich sludge is taken away and can be used for biogas production. The cleaner wastewater now flows over the baffle at the top, leaving the fats and oils behind, ready to be skimmed off. We are now at the biological treatment stage. This secondary treatment stage uses nature to treat the waste, rather than relying on a series of chemical treatment processes. Here at Western Supermare, the activated sludge process is used. These large bubbling tanks are known as aeration lanes, so we can really see it bubbling and frothing away down there. What's actually happening right now? So we're blowing air in there, which the bacteria are using as part of their kind of metabolism. Breaking down the solids and other bacteria and reducing the nutrient load uh, before it goes to the next stage of treatment. So I know Wessex Water uses filter beds in a lot of other water recycling centres. Are ASPs a slightly better way of doing it? Filter beds are an older process. They've been around for 100 or more years. Uh, the ASPs are just a bit more easy to manage because you can monitor what's happening inside the treatment a bit better. The water now moves from the aeration lanes through to the final settlement tanks. The water's looking pretty clear at this stage. This is what's come off the back of the activated sludge plant aeration lanes. Flow comes in into the middle of the tank, is forced to the bottom, and as it radiates out the tank, all the solids settle out by gravity. And then what we is over the channel is fairly clear of solids and then goes off to the UV treatment plant. You did obviously mention the solids as well. What do we do with those solids? So the humus solids settled in this tank are, are pumped and then co-settled with the sludge which is produced from the primary settlement tanks and then tanked off site to be treated elsewhere. At most traditional water recycling centres, treatment finishes at this stage. But here at Western Supermare, the treated water now passes through an ultraviolet light filter, killing or deactivating viruses and bacteria such as E. coli and rotavirus. Here we are right at the end of the treatment process at the final effluent sampling point. What happens here? So the on-site tests we're doing are for ammonia and we're doing a clarity test which gives us an idea of the solids still left in the sample. The bottle is then sent off to our laboratory where it's analysed for the other parameters of our discharge permit. So what is a discharge permit? The discharge permit is set by the Environment Agency and sets the level of certain chemicals to make sure it's environmentally safe to discharge. Now the treatment is complete. The water is finally released back into the environment, ending up here to once again rejoin the water cycle. We've seen what makes up our sewage soup, why it's important not to flush the wrong things, how sewage is treated by water companies, and how the final treated water is returned to the environment. Music